G'day and welcome to another Campfire Live on Thursday night. Um, tonight I've got with me Alan Stevens, who most of you know, uh, international profile communications expert, uh, Yolan from Inspire Tribe, uh, gorgeous coach, Kylie Hutchison, Jeff Jula. Um, and tonight we're doing something a little bit real. No one's wearing makeup, our hair's not done 100%, I'm even shaven. My nose hairs are long, my eyebrow hairs are long. I haven't done my hair because at the moment we're all dealing with more than what we're normally used to. We're, we're, we're dealing with new opportunities. So that's what we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss these new opportunities. So I've come tonight. I'm in my work gear. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and we're going to get down and we're going to get dirty and we're going to talk about the stuff that's going on at the minute because that's what it's about. Okay, we're talking about what's really going on. So I'm opening up tonight's conversation with a question to everybody. I want to know how you're going. I want to know how you're feeling at the moment because there's new opportunities everywhere. Yolan, I'm presuming you're in your home schooling. Kylie, same deal. Alan, we're going to get some advice from you. So if possible, Yolan, do you want to open up? Introduce yourself and share your current experience. Sure. With and can I just clarify current experience with what specifically? Because I, I can go in. <laughs> Homeschooling. Okay. So um, introduce, I'm, introduce myself, Yoland. I'm a coach. Uh, we do mindset mentoring, and we teach an emotional intelligence framework. Uh, so for me, my current experience, I I'm kind of enjoying you know, using our stuff on our children more than perhaps what I ever have before. <laughs> I have four children. So an 18-year-old that's in first year uni, a 14-year-old in year 10, 13-year-old in year 7, and, a, and an 11-year-old in grade 5. So I've got four kids at home uh, and they're all and they're all studying. And uh, my experience so far has been has been pretty pretty good. Although when I say that we've got super strict boundaries and uh don't put up with much in our household so i would <laughs> i would say i'm probably different to the to the average person but that's a, an assumption but we are uh, we kind of hold pretty firm boundaries so with that it's going relatively well yeah brilliant because that's boundaries is what you do that's what you said that's, that's yeah, one of the things yeah one of the things I do, yep. yeah and, that, and that's and that's a brilliant thing because i'm finding at the moment myself um, with Oxford, I've got new opportunities because I'm not his teacher, but I'm learning to navigate and communicate with him, which is my thing. I teach people how to communicate. I, I teach people how to hear. So that's an amazing opportunity for me to learn from him, but I'm also understanding that he's got his systems and practices that he said he knows and I don't. So at the moment, I need to be the, I need to be the student while he teaches and then integrates that with me. So, yeah, having yeah, yeah. boundaries is important. So, how is that leading into something for you there? No well, what was that question? What was so, the question? <laughs> okay, cool. So, for me at the moment, for me at the moment, I'm becoming the I'm becoming the student. Yep. Oscar and his and his teacher need to teach me how to work with them, and that's my experience at the moment. So what was the question? Is that similar? Is that similar for you? Is that my experience? Yes. Uh, no. Okay. Share with me yours, why and, and why this is so I can learn. Um. Well, I guess I'm. I guess I'm probably. I guess I'm probably learning a bit, but I guess in this in this household and with what my partner and I do as living. We're trying to we're trying to empower the children to set their own boundaries, to be responsible for their own learning. Yeah, and I suppose I feel we are we are in a position to guide them and help them. And you know, our whole thing is about becoming internally strong and taking ownership. And so we're kind of we're using that as a background for our children. So I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm learning, and maybe I'm not opening, opening myself up to the learning that's possible. Certainly a potential, but 
I don't feel like I'm the student in this situation with the children at home. No, no. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. That, that's good. So I'm going to learn from you then. Because I'm gonna, okay. I'm, you're coming, I want to learn. That's that's what we're here for, okay? Yeah. We're here to learn from people to gain new skills so that we can improve everything that's going on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Kylie, I'm, I am playing with your mic because you've got the background noise. <laughs> so um, what's your experience at the moment? If I can unmute. Hey. <laughs> muted. Oh, I'm not muted. There you go, back um, in. I'm not, sorry, I've got background noise. Sorry, I don't know why I've got background noise. I tried to set myself up here. Um, 15, uh, year 10. Um, yep. it, it's it's an interesting challenge. Um, I, I am trying to set some, you know, okay, boundaries is, you know, no, you can't spend all night playing video games with your mate. I know that he's been training for this isolation his whole life. He's like, yep, I've got this mum. I'm just going to sit around, play video games. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get through it in my pyjamas all day. Just bring me snacks. I'm like, mm, no. That's really, I know that you think that, but no. Um. So, yeah, we had a rule that, you know, between nine and three, he couldn't have any electronics. He had to do his schoolwork. Um, but then he uh, he was staying up late and not getting up till like 11 o'clock in the morning and then going, oh, just a little bit of schoolwork game. It's three o'clock now. I can get on video games. I'm like, mm. oh, no, <laughs> let's have some <laughs> clearer boundaries around this. Um, so, yeah, we had to, I had to be really strict and, and I'm not, one to really be really strict. I'm like, you're 15, you should be able to manage this yourself, you should be able to regulate what you should be doing. You know, you're about to leave home, I'm pushing you out the door, and and I don't need you to do this. Um, but yeah, we sort of round it back a bit. Um so it's it's been a bit of negotiation, a bit of um of okay, well, you can do this if you have this and do this if you do this. But, um, yeah, we're, we're getting there. It, it's a slow process. Um, as far as actually doing his work, that's a whole other thing. He's submitted assignments and stuff. Um, yeah. But I, I don't think I've found it's just easier to for him to learn <laughs> Um, I can't sort of enforce this really clear, like, right, between nine and three, we're going to do this. Yep. In this uh, at school, he'd be learning all day anyway. He, he'd be getting a few hours worth of work. He'd be playing sport. He'd be talking to his friends. He's having a lunch break. He's having a, you know, he's going to recess. He's he's going to get disrupted in class by someone else. So what do you, I can't. I, I'm just not that kind of person that's like right, clear lines, this is what we're going to do. Um, you know, if he wants to work on his assignment at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, then, you know, he has to do it. There's been a few times when he's had to do it on a Sunday afternoon because it was due on Monday. Bad luck. Um, it's today, Thursday, Tuesday or Wednesday. His, his work is here. Hard yeah. copies. Um so I was like, well, it's all here now. You can do it. And he's like, it's school holidays. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just like, no. No. So I got it out to read it. And it's not easy. That's, that's something quite interesting for me because one mm. of the things that I've realised really is uh, I initially thought, great, school it's going to be sort of a nine to three roughly objective that they're going to have to do at home. But it's actually far from that. If they have their recesses, their lunches, their their actual education yeah. time, what I'm learning is only two to three hours. Yeah. That's far from from yeah. So for me, that's yeah. been a really big eye-opener because I wasn't prepared for that. I was arranging my day to have six hours where I'm going to be able to do things. And I'm like, oh, you're like, no, that's not going to work. Yeah. So I've had, I've found, you know, my negotiation skills are just 
they're getting to a whole new level because I'm having to go to a level. And that's something that I'm and, – and, like, just hearing you there, Kylie, you know, you have to negotiate at a different level you haven't been doing for a while. So that's another skill. But I think the reason why I'm, I'm so happy Alan's joining us tonight, and especially – and Yolan also, because – we need new skills right now, and the only way we learn new skills is through good communication. The better the communication, the better the way that we get through a scenario, the better the outcome. So I'm going to throw over to Alan for a second just to explain what he does. And I know a lot of people on the campfire actually know Alan. I don't know everyone knows, but most people know what he does. But I want you to get specific about what you've learned with communicating with kids. Okay, well, first of all, just on the timing of the, before we go into that, the amount of time the kids spend at school, think also it's not only playing in recess and other things, but it's the uh, role ma uh, taking of the school, the, the teacher at the time. They've then uh, got other issues coming up in the classroom. Somebody steals somebody's uh, pencil case or they they niggle each other. So the the school teacher now is a referee between all of those. And while he's trying to do, he or she are doing that, the kids aren't learning. He's involved with some of the kids and the others are sitting back and finding any opportunity they can to just do something else. So the amount of time you're going to spend at home teaching them is not going to be six or seven hours. So if you thought you had that time, you haven't. So you've really got to put the time together where it's, it's very um, organised, put a structure in place. You have to have your boundaries in place and stick to those because I know with especially with mums with women they usually set the boundaries but it's the men who actually maintain the boundaries who enforce the law and so if you set a boundary especially this is for the mums make sure you stick by it do not ease off on it have a structure in place there's think about rewards so if you do this work by this particular time then you can do this if you get up late then that's when your school day starts and it doesn't finish until you've done your work. And if that's into the evening, you've missed out on that game time, especially if you're on the internet playing with your mates. You're going to lose that because you're going to have to do that work. You point out to them that, hey, we're going to make it as easy as possible for you, but you've got to work with us. So it's a two-way communication. It's a negotiation between the two. And once you put it in place, you lock it in place. Now, so, but what I do is, your, your facial features virtually, as I've said before, will tell me your personality, the structure of your face, the muscle movement that you have when you think about things, the repetitive movements will create ridges and crevices. That tells me your thinking style, how you need to uh, be approached, how you need to learn things, how you're likely to act in any situation. So the first thing is really know your kids, but you also need to know yourself as well. Because I've got the seven secrets to reading people, but the first th three, the first one is know yourself, then read the other person, and then know how to change the way you want to be spoken to to the way that they need to be spoken to. So you talk to the child in the way that they need to be spoken to. And Kylie, you know this because of the, the work we did with um, uh, Jack many years ago and how that's just been applying that and it's made a difference. Yeah. So, I'm, just up with I'm really sorry. Kylie, have you got headphones? Um, I can get some. Is that I don't okay? know what the background is. Yeah. I don't know, do you mind running and grabbing? Because I want to keep you in the conversation. I'm having to mute you at the moment. So is that okay? Yeah, good, good, good. It's like a TV or radio or something. It's something. Mm. Uh, yeah, no worries. Feedback is enough. Thank you. Mm. So, yeah. No, right? I, don't think it's, I don't think it's coming from Kylie. I'm still hearing the noise here and you've just muted her. No, I've just muted her now and we're back in. So it should be good now. Okay, yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, where was I? <laughs> okay, so we're talking about Kylie. That's why mm. I grabbed that. Yeah. yeah, so I did, I profiled Jack, Jake, sorry, Jack, many years ago, about 10 years ago, and the teachers weren't connecting with him. So I did a report, Kylie's used that with the teachers and the after schools care, got them to talk to him in the way that he needed to be spoken to, and the situation almost changed immediately where they said he would never do presentations in front of the class. A year later, he was doing presentations in front of the class. Wow. And with his autism, he's, um, or his Asperger's, the medication he was on, they were able to reduce that as well. So the more that you can connect with your child, the more 
that you've got a better arrangement with them, the less stress they're going to be. And they used to say, you know, happy wife, happy life. Well, it's happy human, happy life. So it comes down to if anybody in the house is not happy, then nobody's happy. So it's a case of making sure they're happy, but it's not uh, wrapping them in cotton wool and giving them everything they want. That's not going to do anything for them. It's going to make them worse. So the boundaries have got to be in place. Negotiations have got to be there. And you make sure that in that process that they fit, uh, fulfill their side of the bargain, their side of the deal, and therefore you fulfill yours. And you have written into the contract that you have with them, a verbal contract, that if you don't do this and you do that, then this is what you lose here. But as long as you do that, then we can do this. And if we get into it and get it done faster, then you've got more time to go and do the stuff that you want to do. So don't muck around. Just get into it. Get it done quickly. Do it right. If you have questions, come and talk to me. But it's also important for the parent to know what work they're doing. Have an understanding of that. And if you don't understand it because it's maths or whatever you haven't done since you've been to school when you were a kid, then ask your child to explain that to you because while they're teaching you, they're learning and they're in a conversation with you that doesn't feel like they're doing homework. They're having a discussion. So they're learning at that process at that time. Yeah, I, I love hearing that. I just want to go one step further. The, the uh, vocal agreement, for me, I put it down on paper because the agreement is then shared between us and then I have the bathroom agreement. Oscar and I set up agreement. We actually did a Zoom video on how um, we did it together so we could learn how to use Zoom, teach him, but also so that we could learn our process, watch our process. We got the whiteboard out. We went through it all, changed it all, and it's just awesome. So that's that's mm -hmm. how I did it, and it's a skill that is an agreement. That's Setting it. that agreement yeah. is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to unmute Kylie, and hopefully we can get this back on. So, Colin, you had your hand up then. I did, I did, I did. Um, mm -hmm. I've take, taken a few notes. There's so many things I want to say. Um, can I can I say two things? Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. the best part of this, it's live and raw. It is what it is. We've got questions coming in. We're going to try and answer them. Right now we're working on this. We're having mistakes. This is life. This is our current current scenario. Kyle is in and out. Things aren't working perfectly. Bring it. Let's Perfect. bring it on. Um, so I was just, uh, I mean, I'm just. Right now we're working on this. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of that that I agree with. And one of them is what I wanted to kind of point out and discuss I'm, uh, and it's not just me. I think, I'm like, I think all, all students, but to get the message across to all of our children that they are actually responsible for their own learning. So, more as going into vortex, about how am I going to manage my children? I think it's such an amazing, beautiful opportunity for our kids. Now, I get that it's difficult because a lot of them aren't yet used to it, or they're sort of starting the process of learning how to do it, but. To learn to be responsible for their own learning, it's a skill that we all need our entire lives. So, you know, in in this house, between the hours of nine and three, we say you can talk like you can talk to your friends, you know, with schooling, but no, no other screens for things. In fact, two of our kids are banned from screens at the moment because uh, they've been misbehaving. Um, but and they can't, and now my partner and I work from home, so they do have the opportunity to come and talk to us sort of between what we're doing. But generally speaking, I'm like, between the hours of nine and three, you guys have got to go to, you guys have to work it out yourself. And you're in this amazing environment that none of us were. If you don't understand something, go to YouTube, type it in, and watch a goddamn video on it. Like, there's, there's so much information out there. They don't need to come to ask. And in fact, YouTube knows more stuff than I do mm. so I was, just, I was just writing down the whole self-directed learning responsible for their own learning mm. and you talk to them either throughout the day or at night or on the weekend going hey if you get stuck write it on a piece of paper if you've got five questions for us at the end of the day great see mm. how many you can answer yourself and it's actually okay to not know the answer in the moment it's okay for kids to hold attention for a couple of hours going I don't know how to do that mass thing I don't understand what my teacher has asked of me it's such mm. a good good school for kids to learn and i'm wrapped that they're learning it in this intense mm. environment i think it's i think it's amazing 
So, well, see, I love that because, you know, at school they've got rote learning and we're not doing rote learning at home. The yeah. thing is, as you've just said, Yolanda, is that the fact that you're giving them problem-based learning, experiential learning, they go and experiment for themselves. They go, because when you use rote learning, you learn a subject. But when you use experiential and especially problem-based learning, you learn how to think. You never need to worry about learning a subject because now you've got the power to go out and find the answers of anything that you need to do. So this is a great opportunity. As I keep saying, parents, we're not sculptors and we're not uh, uh, carpenters. Our job is not to turn our kids into something. We're, we're gardeners. Here's a perfect opportunity to be that gardener, to help your child nurture them, get them to uh, go and work out things for themselves. Yes, come back when they get stumped, but at least give it a go. And if they come back stumped, we'll ask them, you know, what, how did you go about that? What, ways, what other ways could you do it? You don't even may not even answer the question to them for them. In yeah. that process, you've got them thinking again and send them back to do some more research. Absolutely. Once they yeah, and I think in the in the school environment, they can put their hand up, oh, I'm I'm stuck, I need to ask a question. Mm. My kids, I'm like, you can't, you don't have access to me all day. Work it out. Mm. And if they go, oh, but I don't know, good. Mm. Get comfortable with holding the tension of not knowing. It's a mm. skill you have in your life. That like is I brilliant. I'm gonna I'm mm. gonna throw something on top of that because I, I, I'm loving hearing that. If it's also one of the best opportunities to build a stronger bond with your child. If mm. at that point they have learned something new and they've watched YouTube, they've learned a new skill, hey, come and teach me. Hey, come and show me what you've learned and explain yeah. it to me because it reinforces that in their mind. They then relearn it and guess what? Mm. You probably will learn something too. The oh, same I, time. I totally yeah. learned what indices meant this afternoon. I'm like, what are well, you know, like to, uh, <laughs> you know, to the power of. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this YouTube video, I'm like, oh, so cool. We didn't have this stuff when we were in school. Well, you, can teach me how, you can teach me how to spell that first before I worry about what it is. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm going to backtrack the second part of the conversation, which I think is extremely important. Carly, earlier Alan was talking about Jack and talking about how... Yeah, the, the the art of communication really helps your schooling and opportunities. With that. Can you share yeah. that with us? Well, I um I credit Alan with um <laughs> saving my life, saving my child's life, one or the other. Um, Jack was you know, at seven, was pushing his boundaries at school, not not wanting to learn things. Um, I met Alan in another thing, and and I and he said, "I love profiling kids. I, no one will give me their kid." And I was like, "Feel free, take my kid. <laughs> practice on him." I um, just want to profile and so don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, practice on mine. You can have him for a while. But um, he he gave me this whole profile, and um. And a lot of people say that that Jack and I look alike, and I could probably get him in here and show you, but we do look alike, but we totally don't communicate in the same way at all. And I'm I'm very free-spirited, and time is is just a suggestion, uh, speed limits. And, you know, it's just I'm very flowy with things, and my son is structured and has to have routine and needs this, and, and I was losing my mind with him. And... Um, and Alan basically showed me how to talk to my child, help my child realise with me, and, and I say all the time to my child, if you know, I get him to explain something to me which I don't understand and I don't get, and I say to him, mate, if I don't get it, that's you. You didn't explain it in a way that I don't get, and the same with you. If, if you don't understand it, then you have to ask. You have to say, I don't get it. Please explain it to me in a way that I understand. Um, so yeah, our we've, we've come to an arrangement now. <laughs> it's fifteen, and it's a lot easier. Um, but it's I I just know that I have to change how I communicate what I need with him, um, and and what he has to do. And and you know, I'm still the parent. I'm still like, dude, no. There's no, you are not staying up late. No, you are not doing this. That's fine. You can do that, but I'm taking the internet with me when I go out the door. <laughs> and you know, I'll take the plug with me and then you'll be stuffed. But and I've taken charges, you know, my boss at work was like, What's that? And I said, That's an Xbox controller. 
He said, why is that on your desk? I said, because the kid can't play with it while it's here. <laughs> <laughs> so I will, I will take things. And, but, and he knows there's consequences, there's boundaries, there's rules, and that's life. You know, life, despite all of his issues that he has with this bird, just like I, I did hear Alan say before, um, the world will not conform to him. He is going to have to live in that world. And and so he's going to have to learn those skills. And can he, I ask, Kylie? And he ask, is learning. Can I ask? Because this is this is beautiful. What is Jack's ability? Like his superpower? Yeah, no. Well, he's is because I was saying that I, I he's on the spectrum for. Is he, was he, is Jack autistic? Asperger. Asperger's. Yeah. Have we lost Colin? Yep, looks like she may have frozen her <laughs> in. <laughs> at the wrong time. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, so um, he was diagnosed. Sorry. Internet. <laughs> I know. Hey, listen, <laughs> We're going everywhere. But the, the, reason, the reason why I'm sorry to jump on you all that, Question. The, the reason why I wanted to jump on that is because good communication skills, it doesn't, it doesn't conform to just one aspect of life or just one ability or anything. Good communication comes down to everything. Every single thing that we're involved in, the clearer the communication, yeah. the better we do that, the better the outcome for all situations. So, yeah. So, Sorry, I just yeah. wanted to point that out because I think that's really cool. If it's all right with the panel, I'm going to take it away from us for a second. Yeah. Yeah. We've got Some questions. questions. And I, I want to get to them because it's important. So, yeah, there is a few questions. Sharon's asked a big question, which I'm going to get back to later. I want to start with something a bit smaller, okay? Um, so thank you, Sharon. All right. The current question is... last one. <laughs> get into it. Uh, I don't <laughs> Get a refill. Oh, thank you. You want your kids to top it up. Responsible <laughs> service about the whole thing. Oh, actually, I'm going to... My text He's in the other room. I'll just text him, please. <laughs> just, 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 before, just before we do jump to that question, there's, some, there's one thing that I categorically believe builds more trust than anything else with our kids. Don't say something and not follow through. That's it. Okay, I don't care what it is. Mm. If you say something, follow through. The minute you don't, mm. you've broken their trust. Our kids are, are, will push us and mm. push us because they want to do it now. They want to find out the things. So they're going to mm. push. The one thing for me above mm. anything else, if you threaten a kid, you better believe follow through with it. Mm. Otherwise, you've lost it. And so, so, therefore, don't threaten them if you don't, you're not going to follow through. Don't threaten. So, mm. I just want to jump on that because I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, well, I'll just add to that if I can. The kids don't try and break you. The kids are trying to test you to see if you can hold. If you can hold, then you've got their respect, they've got their boundaries, they feel comfortable. Without it, they don't feel comfortable, and that's when they break away from you and they get themselves into trouble. But I think you wanted to go to uh, John Hope's question, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I want to jump on John Hope's question. Thanks, John, for the question. Um, so if anybody is watching and they want to ask questions, on the link, you can actually get StreamYard to give you permission. And I'd like you to do that if possible because I'd like to know who's answering the questions. I can't actually see unless you've given StreamYard mm. permission. I can see the questions. I can't see who it is. Mm. So if you see yourself pop up in a question, just pop your name up. Let us know who you are. So until I get better at this format. So this question, I believe one of the main things the schools teaches is social development. How do we do that at home? I'm actually going to open this I'm going to, and then throw it out to the panel. One of the things that I've taken upon myself to do at the minute is recess and lunch are where relationships are formed. I'm making sure that Oscar has his lunch in a Zoom meeting with one of his mates from school. That's, sit down, have lunch, go through it. Because for me, that's how I'm going to keep the social connection. That's just that's one thing I'll put over to the panel. Start with Yol. Um, I think the fact that they that they're learning to maintain connection, one build connection, maintain connection online is phenomenal because 
that's where the future is going. And I think even when this coronavirus is either over or a vaccine comes, in two to three years there'll be another virus and we'll be in shutdown again. You know, we'll either be in shutdown or our lives are going to significantly change because of this. So the more we can learn to build connection and maintain connection through these type of forums, the better. So I think for kids that are doing their school their schooling online, I'm like uh, the, the way I'm talking to my own kids is, yes, it'd be nice to see your friends and you don't have to see them. You can see them like this. And the, what forms the basis of all, all connection is be curious about the people that you're talking to. Ask questions, be interested. You know, it's more, it's um, be interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, sorry, be interested instead of being interesting. Um, so I haven't put anything in place, but it's just a culture within this house that you can still have friendships, you can still have connection. Nothing has actually changed other than they're not physically with you. And that's just another good skill to add to your add to your toolkit. Mm. So I think specifically for this for this question, um, you know, um, my kids have, you know, made cookies and they've, they've had the phone there and they've just chatted while making cookies. They've gone and painted. They've taken them out to the, you know, they've jumped on the trampoline together. They're doing activities together, but just through the phone or the iPad. Yep. So I think just that and mm. encourage that and not necessarily see it as a bad thing. Go, mm. isn't this wonderful that you're learning how to connect in this way also? So I think you're finding that the, the social impact is actually yeah, changing because when they're at school, quite often they're not talking to other kids. They're not really socialised. They've just got their core group that they're close to and others they're not talking to. And they were using uh, the internet in the wrong way. There was a lot of cyberbullying. And people, you know, the kids watching what other people were saying to them and getting all caught up in that. And I think the fact that we're now isolated, they're not seeing their friends, all of a sudden they've started to realise how much they, their friends are worth to them or how much they mean to them, how much they miss them. So there's been a bit of a wake-up call for them to not take their friends for granted anymore. Yeah. And so they want to connect with them. And then having it, as you've said, using Zoom to have those Zoom meetings and having chats. So when they do get together, they don't just sit there umming and ahhing and playing with their devices. They're talking to each other. So you can get that social interaction working really well. But the very yeah. first in social interaction is the one your child has with you. That's the one you build up first. And from that, they learn then how to communicate and talk to others. You guide by example in those negotiations in how do you, you put the work together, what the timing and everything goes, where their boundaries are, and they learn that. They're going to start talking to their friends with a similar uh, intelligence so that they will then be putting boundaries in place with their friends as well. They'll get better relationships. I think also just modelling what we're doing. I mean, before this call, we just, had, we just had dinner with a couple of friends of ours and we just sat here and ate, ate our burritos that the kids made and they mm. brought them. We're just munching on our on our dinner and we're chatting and the kids sort of kept coming in and saying hi and walking out and so they saw that that's how we're staying in contact with our friends and it's just the new normal for now. So there's no mm. sort of sitting down and teaching. It's just this is what our parents are doing. So it's it's normal as well. I think I think that when we normalise it, it, do, it 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 becomes a non-issue to the kids. If I was here going, I can't see my friends and I need face to face contact, the, the kids are going to. To tap into that and go, oh, yeah, you're right. But I, there's no conversation like that now in our house. Yeah, brilliant. I yeah. think something else that's going on at the moment is the fact that because there's no, no sports, there's no bits and pieces, kids are around adults a lot more. They're at home with their adults. So now we get to role model how to be adults. We actually get a generation of kids coming through learning to adult. And one of the things that I'm big on is I, I, there's nothing, no conversation off the table in my house with my son. Mm. Any conversation's open for, you know, we're talking about money, we're talking about finances, we're talking about where the struggles are, Where what are the struggles right now? Where, where's where's money coming from? Where's other people's struggles? How do we make people happy? The importance of a smile. I'm getting to give him the best of me mm. and from an adult's perspective. So when else is that happening in life? So I'm gonna un I'm gonna unmute Kylie, and I'm really sorry to mute you and not mute you, Kylie. Can you stick your hand up when you have got things to say? Only because of the background feed. Right. So I'm gonna unmute you. And I'm gonna get your opinion now, please. Um, yeah. Sorry about the background noise. I seriously can't work out what it is, but we'll live. Um, it's I, I'm. 
taking this opportunity to teach my child resilience. At this point, you know, we have a roof over our head. We always have food. You know, never in your life have I ever not provided that for you. Realise that I will always provide for you. I will have a roof over your head. I will have food. No, we can't get Uber Eats. No. Why, Mum? Why can't we? Um, we can't, you know, we can't go out to dinner like we did. We can't, we can't go to the shop like we did. Oh, am I frozen? Yeah, do you know yeah, what I'm going to I'm actually going to kick you from the stream and I'm going to ask you to come back in, all right? So, it, but it's resilience. Just get through <laughs> this process. We have to do this. It's, res, it's the resilience of this whole process with Kylie at the minute. We're, we're working. <laughs> you know, I'm booting. She has literally been kicked from the screen. So, um, kick from studio. <laughs> and she yes. will come back. But uh, as John was saying there before in his comment, he was saying that, uh, you know, kids will always need kids and you can't take that away from them. They'll always need other kids. Yeah. What we're looking at at the moment is hopefully this is not a, you know, it's not a forever situation. We're hoping it's not going to be for a long period of time. But take advantage of the time that we've got now to build that relationship back with your child so that they see you as their mainstay, the person they can come back and talk to when they've got pressure. Because we know that, well, as far as the girls go, between the age of 11 and 15, more than 5% of them will attempt suicide in Australia. And then between the age of 11 and 19, the boys really take over and they are successful. They're the highest suicide rate of the youths. They're completely disconnected. And this is the opportunity to get that connection back because the only people they've got guiding them are their mates who don't have a clue either because they're in the same boat. And you've got the bullying and things going on because they don't have the social skills. Yes, they're supposed to be at school getting social skills, but that's why there's so much problem at schools with the bullying and everything else. So we've got to re, it's like hitting the restart button and re kicking the, the, or rebooting the system. And the parents can do that, create that relationship with the kids, build that resilience up, get them talking to their mates via Zoom getting them into the schoolwork, having after uh, set our sessions with their friends talking on Zoom and teaching them how to talk the right way. And I believe that we won't see as much cyber stuff going on because the kids won't get the opportunity to do it. And so we'll start to see a difference in their behaviour. So kids who are feeling completely lost, ready to commit suicide, this might be a great opportunity to turn that around. Yeah, brilliant. And I, I'm just, I'm going to hit something there right now. Suicide. It's increasing. Mm. It's, I don't want to not talk about it because right now pressure is on everyone, mm. all different angles. And that's it. I'm I can't I can't I'm hurting over this because everybody's important. Everybody mm has something to give. Mm. If things are shit, mm. understand there are people who have been there and done that, okay? It's hard to find them sometimes. But reach out. Mm. Part of what we're doing right now, part of the reason why we are having this conversation is to remove pressure from families. We're giving our best so that people can take skills away from this and support their families so that we can get through this together, okay? Suicide? Jack! It's, <laughs> thanks, guys. Back on. Your mic's on. <laughs> mic's on, video's off. <laughs> I think she wants it the other way around. <laughs> so... And great interruption. I think it's so true, Scott. And I think um, you know there is there is pressure on there is pressure on families. There is pressure on yeah. there's pressure on everyone at the moment. And I think especially on the on the topic that we're talking about of homeschooling, I, my opinion is parents are probably taking too much of that pressure on when potentially they don't need to. Children are not in every single case that I'm going to generalise here. Children are more resilient than we actually give them credit for. 
And Absolutely. yes, Alan, I agree in the fact that, and, mm -hmm. and you've got as well, you know, I agree that we need to be there, we need to role model, we need to talk to them, we need to have connection. But there's some parents like, I don't have time to do it, or I can't, I don't even have the mental capacity to do it. Like, I'm so busy trying to bring the income mm -hmm. in. Yes, if I had nothing to bloody do all day, of course I'd connect with my children. Some parents don't even know how to connect to their children. Some parents don't even know how to communicate. So I feel like the conversation is good, but at the same time I'm like, let's not create more pressure mm. for the parents. The parents that know what to do are no, probably well, already doing what yeah, they need to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, if but, I might, May, what Scott was saying there before about call, uh, asking for help, if you're a parent in that position, don't do it on your own. Don't try it. You know, yeah. This is why these groups are out there. This is why we're having these conversations so that people know where they can go to and ask for that help, ask for the advice on how to do it. Because yeah. you don't have to be all things to all people. You just yeah. be the best that you can. And the areas, I know that if I'm not good in a particular area, I go and get somebody else to give me some advice on or a hand on how to do that. So this is another chance for us to learn that. That takes enormous courage, though. Like, if you're doing it tough and you are stressed, and if we're talking about suicide, if you're on the verge of that or even contemplating that, um, you know, people suicide because they believe that there is no help. So mm -hmm. let's, let's kind of land on that point. You know, people aren't suicidal. Go, yeah, I'm just going to put my hand up and ask for help. Like that's that tends to it doesn't tend to work in that mm -hmm. way. Yeah? So if we're if we're discussing if we're discussing this topic and it, it's a relevant topic, I reckon it's more about let's relieve the pressure of the parents. And in regards to school schooling at home. Worst case scenario, even if kids don't learn anything for six months, it's not the end of the world. Like, relax. No, no, yeah. As long as you can be kind to your children, then that's the number. Be kind to yourself and kind to your children. If they don't learn their times tables, if they haven't done their homework, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's yeah. exactly. So it's not going to change their life completely. You know, if they've got stress and everything else at school, they're not going to learn anyway either. So their end result is, so it's not that important. And that's the other thing too, is taking the pressure off the fact that the kids have got to get these high marks. What they need to do is just learn how to think and how to work things out for themselves. And that way they'll never have that problem. But the, the school system is putting pressure on, they've got to get certain marks to achieve. And so there's a lot of pressure there. I'm on a board of a, of a primary school. So one of the things that we're telling the, the families is get back in touch with, if you've got any questions, ask about the school work or anything else or there's st uh, stress with the child how do you actually work with the child get in touch with the teachers where i'm looking at the suicide part of it is though as a parent there's, a, there's quite a number of indicators i can teach people that will give away that a person is uh, getting depressed is suicidal and so with that then you're able to then pick those up non-verbals it's in the facial features some of the, the uh, changes there and the expressions the body language that will give you a good indication that something is going on and then if the parent doesn't have the skills to know how to go and talk to their child, they can then ask somebody who does know about it, get that information, and then there could be some intervention or uh, help is, uh, given. So there's the whole thing is that there's always going to be help if we put our hand up. So if you're the person who is suicidal, yeah, men, they're thinking that nothing, there's no more chance, it's over, this is it, and that's my last resort, and they'll go and try and take their life. It's up to other people to pick that up before they attempt it. Once, they, once they're in that state, they're not going to put their hands up. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It's not just one person. It's a combination of all that's working together. Yeah, 100%. I'm, I'm going to jump in pretty heavily on this right now. I help men negotiate life. That's what I do, okay? And I don't know one of those men that's gone, has attempted suicide, come out the other side, and isn't grateful for the fact that he's here. Not one. Okay, so that's that. That's a massive thing. I'm sorry, I'm 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 hurting right now because I, I I see it, and I see the number one reason why people do it is because they don't know how to communicate what's going on. How do they find that? I'm going to tell you how to find it. You be brave and you put your hand up. Because there's people here, people here sitting on this panel right now, that if you knock on our door, you give us a message, we will do everything to give you an answer. We have the tools. That's why we're sitting here right now. We're not sitting here because we're sitting here giving our egos a bump up. We're sitting here because we care, because we care about our communities, we care about our families, 
and I look down the camera, I'll give a shit about you. Everything I'm doing at the minute is based around building up my communities to make us strong. Because right now, we need to. There's four people here. There's people sitting here. Sharon, John Hope. This campfire project is the best place for anybody I know. It comes from love that we sit here and talk about these conversations. I'm going to sit back for a minute and just have a drink because you can feel me. You don't have to hear what I'm saying right now. You can feel me. If you need something, ask me. I'm going to ask you three to just take over the conversation. I'm just going to sit for a minute. Yeah, well, I'd like to, if I can, I'd like to, um, Kylie to uh, step in. If, if the internet looks like it might, she's moving around, so the internet's stable at the moment. So please, let's hear from you. <laughs> I, put, I put my son's earpods in and I was like, oh, these will work really well. And then they didn't work and I went, Jack! And I was like, oh, shit. I can't wait to you all laugh. And I was like, yeah, that totally didn't move me. Because <laughs> like all things technology with us, we just call a teenager to fix it. So he's sitting here going, mum, are you muted now? Are you muted? He's whispering, are you muted? And I was like, okay, just sort your damn earpods out, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, child's got earpods. Honestly, but I I did tune in and I did hear what you said and um and um and and I you know I'm I'm with Scott like you know we're here as a community we're here to help people and and this is a really really important time and and you know NBN is is shit and it stands for no bloody network um mm -hmm. sorry about my internet but right. we are but that won't stop us being here to help you you know <laughs> if somebody needs it put your hand up put your hand up and ask it's okay we've all been there we've all been down you know i had two days in my pajamas last week didn't get out of bed couldn't get out of bed just like kylie what the I'm language ask, is coming out i'm gonna ask you right now how did you prepare yep. for today what did you do to prepare for today well i Tried not to do my hair and makeup, like you said, because I was like, oh, I'm going to be on the live. I have to do my hair and makeup. Um, and I'm wearing my shirt, and I think, I don't know which way I'm going this way. I spilled my dinner. I spilled my dinner and my shirt. Um, so I didn't <laughs> I didn't do a lot. Um, about half an hour before this, I did think, oh, we're talking about homeschooling. I should maybe get out Jack's, um, Jack's work that he got sent and read through it and, and like... Seriously, who who can read that? Like that's math. Who can read that? I can't even. I can't even read that. And I'm wearing my glasses. Going. Um, and then uh, I read <laughs> shit. And then I read um his history assignment, which was on Vietnam. And I cried. I, I honestly cried. Um, which my emotions at the best of times go like this. So, you know, add coronavirus isolation and me being a death doula or talking to people about death added to the, you know, you know world grief, grief that we're feeling. So I'm like this. Like this. So, uh, so then I read about Vietnam and I read about how the soldiers were treated on their way home um, and, and I was impressed that they were teaching that at school. Uh, they also spoke about an Aboriginal man, like they said, Indigenous people in that. So I read that and so I had a cry. Yep. So then I had um, a, gla a glass of wine and thought, well, I'm ready to go on this live now and deal with my shit internet. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> and I just think all we can do, all we can yeah. do is what we can do in the moment. Mm. And I really want to thank you for like and, and for owning it because here we are presenting and tonight it's just completely raw. There's, you know, we're having a glass of wine. We're, I've just, I've, just, I've put my heart out. You've just sat there and gone everything. This is life at the minute. This is life. But That's here's, here's the thing. Mm. We're yeah. still going. We're still pushing. I'm not changing my shirt, you know, no. 
but we're all pushing through right now and and for the for the reasons because yeah. we've all gone and yeah. got work done on ourselves we've all improved ourselves we've all found tools to improve ourselves enough that we've got those to give to other people yeah. come to us. so i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah. go back now to a question if that's okay all right it's a big one so sure. and i'm using technology that i'm not great at but <laughs> okay here we go i'm sorry uh yolan and kyla you can you see this question just send it up Jacinda Arden yeah. interviewed Nigella Latta, a renowned psychologist in New Zealand, who made comments about groups in society and they could, how they could best cope with lockdown. But he suggested that if teens wanted to lead a vampire life during this time, gaming with mates and not getting a lot of homeschooling done, that is okay. Note that he has a 17-year-old. My colleagues and I debated this strongly on my page. What does the panel think? Start so with okay. you, Alex. Okay, the way I look at this is, as I've already said, it's if they don't get some work done, it's not going to be a, a problem. You know, if they don't get some of the work done, yeah, you know, they lose a term. They'll pick it up again. It's not that important. But the important thing is that they're healthy. But at the same time, okay, no. how much time mm -hmm. do you let them sit and create a new pattern of behaviour, which is doing nothing but playing the games? So you've got to mm -hmm. get a balance in there. And... The kids will go and do whatever, the least whatever they enjoy doing. They won't do the stuff they don't want to do, which is the same as us. We don't do stuff we don't like doing. We want to put it off. So the thing is that as parents, though, we've got to guide them through on that to make sure that they do have a balance in there. There is some work that they have to do so they don't lose yeah. the discipline of doing study because it's like leaving all your study till the end of the year and then panicking the night before an exam. It's a disaster. And that's when we put ourselves yeah. under a lot of stress. So, so they don't learn the lose the learning uh, discipline. They have to do a certain amount of work, but does it have to be done at a certain time of day? Can it be then shifted around? Can we work in with, well, within what happens in the, the household as far as everybody else is concerned as well? It's, I mean, they're asleep and all the rest. But how can we then uh, put that in a way in which they can select a time? We negotiate that. What's the best time for you to be playing your games, catching up with your mates, et cetera? Okay, that's fine. But then there's a, the, comp, the payback for that is, or the compromise is that you then have to, negotiation, is to do your work at a particular time. You know, let them yeah. have a bit, bit lax with it. If they don't get the marks right, it's not that big a problem. It's whether we're teaching them how to learn as to whether they've learnt the subject. You know, that process of yeah. learning how to learn is far more important. And there's a lot of other learning that's going to go on, not just subjects. The learning of you know, developing them into negotiations, be able to uh, look at uh, and take responsibility, build res uh, resilience. Those things are going to be far more important because if they've got that and they're a happy kid, when they're back at school, they're going to learn faster anyway. They'll pick it all up in no time. If they're miserable and they go back to school and they're miserable there, the end result is it's going to be as bad as they were before because we don't learn when we're not happy. <coughs> so it's finding the balance. Yeah. It's not. It's a good thing to miss things. Yeah. It's a good thing to want things. When you want it, you're going to work harder for it. Mm. So I'm going to throw over to you, yeah. Gong. Your hand was up. Uh, thanks. Um, yeah, my, my, my personal opinion on the video games is, um, again, it comes back to the self-directed learning and for children yeah. to learn uh, and feel into what actually feels good and what actually do, what actually doesn't. Yeah, so I just wrote down the question, you know, does it feel good to you? So if you've got a 17-year-old who wants to yeah. game today, now, I'm like, I'm a big believer on boundaries and relatively strict boundaries, but then outside of the boundaries, the kids get to choose what they want to do. So a simple question of, hey, how do you feel after 10 hours of gaming versus on another day, how do you feel after two hours of gaming? And if the child says, I feel great after 10 hours of gaming, then it's, it's for the child, child slash teenager, mm -hmm young adult, um, to learn themselves where the boundary is, what feels good and what doesn't. And if they spend six weeks playing games, you, you know, 10 hours a day, they may look back at that time for the rest of their life going, I learned so much or, jeepers, that was a waste of time and I'm never going to do that again or actually it was, a, it was a time and an opportunity that I connected with myself without the pressure of school and I just cherished that time. Like we don't. No, and I think as parents we often put our own opinion on them going, that's not good for you or how can you enjoy it? But if we get curious going, 
How does it make you feel? And the child then gets to stand up and own their decision, whether it's a good decision or, or, or bad. Okay, so many of these opportunities is a chance to empower our children to speak up and own and own their decisions. Well, on that as well, if you're if they're playing oh, games, oh. have you ever thought of asking them about the game they're playing? If they're playing a war game or something like that, or you know, I don't know what they, what they call it, uh, nightmare or whatever the damn show it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever the thing was called, the nightmare. As far as me not, playing computer not, games, not, when I start playing with them, it was a nightmare for me, I can tell you. But um, I sat down with my grandson who was playing and I asked him a few questions about why he was doing the different things he was doing. And I realised that he was developing strategies. So we yes. then started talking about strategies. So you can use the game as part of the education. If you know the, the maths and other things that they got to learn in school, can you apply that to the game they're playing? Now, wherever you can turn into something practical they enjoy doing, they're going to learn it faster and they'll never forget it. But if you see pushing it into them, rote learning, I guarantee the day after I finished my school certificate and walked away, I didn't remember any of it. I finished sure. uh, you know, certificate at, universe, at uh, TAFE and everything else. As soon as I'd finished it, forgot the lot because I had to learn it to get that uh, pass mark. But if they'd been taught how to do it for learning and applying it to the things I was doing, my God, I'd still remember it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Kylie. If you want to add into this, it's um, yeah, it, it it is something that we have to realize that our children can, you know, my son plays video games. It's exciting. He likes it. The strategy games. He's socializing with his friends, and and he's he's you know strategizing like Alan said and he's doing things and I'm like how am I supposed to say to him get off there stop socializing and go for a walk on the beach like this is a kid who's already a bit socially awkward you know do I do I kick him off his computer game where he's actually being social and coordinating mm. with six other kids and they're working as a team and doing whatever the hell they're doing and I I am one of those strict parents. My child is 15 and he does not play R-rated games at all. He And he's only just in the last year been able to play MA15 plus games. So, you know, he, I'm strict and I have my boundaries. But how can he, how can I say to him, yep, yep, stop playing with your mates and go for a walk on the beach with the dog? He's just looking at me like, really, mum? Mm. And, and and he's learning. He's wait. And and this this virus is teaching people that people can work at home. So his generation, that next generation that's coming through, is going to be working at home, dealing with electronics, building teams online, which we have no concept how to do that. Correct. And these kids are training for that. Yeah. It's 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 like okay, there has to be some boundaries about. And I'm I'm a big one of saying, does this feel good? Do you need a break? He woke up yesterday with a sore shoulder. Because he's hunched over playing his computer game and his keyboard, and his desk wasn't high enough. And he woke up with this man pain in his neck and screaming and carrying on, and he spent the day in bed with no electronics because if you're sick, you don't get electronics at my house. <laughs> so he spent the day in bed with Panadol and a hot water bottle and a hard lesson to learn. And so now he has a higher desk, and and he understands. He goes, "You always blame everything on video games." Well, mate, this one is it's this. This is like I can tell you now, but um, <laughs> but they're gonna have they they have to learn this. They have to. It's like when we were kids, we fell out of a tree and we realised that that branch isn't gonna hold us. Mm. So I think the kids so, are gonna come back and teach us a new level of resilience. They're gonna be teaching us after this, because yeah. as we've said that yeah. you know, at the moment, what do we do? We have a job. Because of the cost of living, we move right away from where we work and we travel two, three hours a day. Some people travel from Newcastle to Sydney to work and then come home yeah. again. So there's all that time wasted. If they're working from home, they're going to have more time with their families. Time. And so yep. in this period, while they're learning all of this stuff and learning what it's like to be locked down in the most extreme situation, when they get older and have their own kids, they're going to remember all this. They're going to understand it. And I guarantee they're going to be better parents. I'm gonna. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. I'm just. I'm gonna throw in something about the video games. Um, I'm the video game Nazi. All the kids yeah. at Oscar 
school know that if I'm there with them and I see an iPad, I'll break it. I'm, I, I haven't had to follow through because it's not there. If I see one, I've got to follow through. I don't threaten. So it's going to cost me a fortune, but that's my opportunity. Yeah. I, I, at this current point in time, uh, finding it, an, an opportunity because my number one thing through my life, I'm, you know, I've got a year 10 fail. I was on the streets at 14. I, I've, I don't have an educated path. What's got me through life is communication and how I do that. So everything I do is based around communication. In my garage, I've got a table tennis set up with two whiteboards. So Oscar and I can talk through every single situation. At some point, I'm going to post that up. So I talk about him a lot. I've got, he's going to be, he, he does teach me about technology. Mm. I, this weekend, have organized a play date for him to learn how to play Minecraft. I'm having to relinquish my fear. And it's my fear, not his. Mm. So I have to accept that it's my fear and I'm going to have to learn the process. And it, I want to thank everyone today for talking about this because it's strategies. So it's my fear keeping him from learning that technology and not giving him the responsibility. I've given him responsibility in every other area of his life, but I haven't given him responsibility in the gaming area because I'm nervous about it, because I'm nervous about how media controls our environments, how fear and, and, and anger control so many opportunities. So I've chosen to not let him have that until I think he's grown up enough to be able to handle that. It's going to be a test. I'll report back to you. I'll let you know how it goes. But how, because... how does he get to be grown up with that if he's never had it? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. So he's allowed to have Zoom meetings. He's allowed to have yep. all those bits and pieces. I refuse gaming. I'm relinquishing that. But how does he learn? How does he learn to be safe online if he's not doing it in controlled circumstances? Mm. I let yep. my son have games um, from about, oh, it was about eight when I let him have a few. I think we had the Wii at eight which was not online, then he was 10 and he was allowed to have games online. But it was in the lounge room, so I could hear him. I'd be cooking dinner, I could hear him playing games in the lounge room and I could hear that conversation. So it's like, wait, is he talking to someone? You know, but I taught him his rule was he could say his real name and he could say he lived in Australia and he could say he's 10. I'm 10, my name is Jack, I live in Australia. And, and he learned and he did the right thing. When he was 10 or 11, somebody else talked to him that wasn't another kid and he, and he just instantly jumped off, blocked them and came and told me. And I said, great, mate. Like, you know, you can talk to other kids, but you can't talk to someone who says they're an adult. But if he doesn't learn that's my child, he had to do it. Learn. But if they're not exposed to it, then how do they learn? As far as I'm concerned, it's like how do the kids cross the road by themselves if you never actually let them cross the road by themselves? Mm. They're I, never going to learn I, it. Yeah, but I'm, leading up to it, you and, teach and them how to. Yeah, but leading up to it, you teach them how to do it, which is being involved yeah. with the child at the time. So, uh, Scott, when yeah. these games, have, let him play the games, but be involved in it as well. Find out how the game yeah. plays. Have discussions about it. Learn how, what he can actually learn in there as well. And in those discussions, you can talk about the things to be safe about and you can set it all up. But I am realise I am showing my age because, Kylie, when you said you wouldn't allow him to have a wee, I thought, what? <laughs> <laughs> a wee. <laughs> yeah. No, the wee. I'm going to back over to what Kylie's just said, the though. The wee was like. Sorry. <laughs> so the the um, one of the things that I've just picked up from Kylie, Oscar's just turned nine. Hmm. And I've worked solely on his communication skills so that I know he can communicate with me before I give him that responsibility of absolute access to something I don't understand that I fear. I know now that I have a communication with him in an honesty level that he can talk to me about things that will frighten him inside that Momo bits and pieces. Whereas I see, I see kids that have started using them from four, five, six, 
that don't have that communication skill already embedded so they mm. don't have that that person to go to i don't mm. this is, is this wrong mm. i've tried to work on that first time will tell if i'm wrong or right i'm 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 addressing my fears with him mm. and i'm looking forward to it so yeah, put together what uh, Kylie had said and what you had said, like Kylie had said, you know, a child can't cross the road unless you let them cross the road. But we don't just let the child cross the road without any instruction. So, yes, you need to have that communication with them, have that so that you know that they're not just going in and playing a game where they could yeah. be left open because that would be like opening up the front gate and saying, okay, you can walk across the road now. Yeah. And it's a busy street, they get run over. So you spend that time with them, you take them through that, you play the game, you understand what it's all about. No. And then yeah. you can step back yeah. and you can let them play the game on their own, knowing that they're going to be safe because they've got the um, the knowledge and the upbringing, they've understood everything to be able to do that. They've got that resilience in there. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, listen, I'm just, I'm a little bit concerned yeah. with time and I'm loving this conversation. But I'm going to, um, there's one comment here I'm not too sure about. Hey, Alan Scott, I thought toilet paper was hard to get, not razors. So I'm not sure about that. <laughs> that has got to be John. Uh, John oh, yeah. <laughs> why, 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 okay. oh, I miss it. Yeah. You know, I'm going to – I'm awesome. Thank you, Kylie. <laughs> Thank you for persisting tonight. But I want to I want to point out something that, for me, is really – Sorry. Ah, don't stress. Um, when – it's really retrospective of what the current situation is. We've been talking for an hour to get to the goal, to get to the real grip, to get to the bits and pieces. It's taken four people who are experts in their field of communication and hearing people and improving people an hour to get to the grip. You're not going to get this straight away. You're going to have to work at it, all parts of it. It's going to take work, and that's what's going to make this happen. So get around each other, put the work in, do the hard yards, and I guarantee you we're all going to come out of this stronger and better than ever. In tradition of the Thursday Night Lives, um, everyone gets to put, give me their one bit of advice leading into this. You've got a minute roughly to share it. Kylie, you can share with us, please, your one bit of advice in this current situation. Yoland. <laughs> Looks like the internet cut in at the wrong time. Do you want you there, Wally? You with us? Yeah, I'm I'm here. Okay. I'm just gonna go straight on. I'll give you another sixty seconds to come up with the goal. Uh, Kylie, what's what's your one minute of advice right now? No, it's not. It's back over to Yoland. Okay. Hey, isn't this live? Isn't this not live? My right internet now? is shit. That's My right. internet is shit. The world is shit. <laughs> and you're still here. My, I'm and you're still, still here. Put, I'm yeah. still here. What's your so the, what? What so with the lesson be resilient and tenacity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep at it. Yeah, tenacity. Go easy on yourself. This mm. is really fucking hard. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, gonna Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like, come here. Look, I just said, I was like, this is shit, this is shit. And my kid coming in was like, what's wrong, mom? This is him. Uh, <laughs> this is he beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jack. He's like, what are you doing, Mum? And I'm like, it's okay. Talking to these uh, three weird people. <laughs> he's like, you're yelling at things that are shit. And I'm like, it's just the internet, mate. <laughs> so I need my lolly. <laughs> We've always had a bit of a wall in the big house that been pretty much self-sufficient by the time they go to high school. So my advice is that if you're thinking younger than high school, perhaps use this time to kind of speed up the opportunity to get them into to get them to self-sufficient before high school. Because I sort of think once I get to high school, 
you can't really teach them that much more once they hit mm. high school. We've always, you know, they need to clean, they need to cook, they need to be able to hold the tension, they need to be able to make decisions, they need, yeah, so in the times of doing it tough, just go, all right, well, what if I what if I took on the mindset of if I could make my kids self-sufficient by high school and this is a sped up condensed time to do it, maybe that m might make it a bit easier, a bit of a game or a bit of a bit of a challenge. So great advice. And that's it. Have some fun with it. As Kylie had said, don't stress over it. Take it easy. The fact that we're sitting here and we're you know, talking about our experience and everything else. Nobody who does this work got there by just reading a textbook. We've lived through this. We've been through all of it. So we're talking from experience. This is stuff that, and we've made plenty of mistakes along the way. The thing is, don't worry about the mistakes you're going to make. Just keep focusing on what you want as the outcome. Want to have the best uh, for your child? Okay. As um, Yolanda said, that your child, by the time they get to 17, they're on their own at that point. You can't teach them much more. So now take the time to teach them the right way, the best way, as I said, don't be the uh, the carpenter or the sculptor. Be that gardener who nurtures them so that they pick up the best techniques. So by the time they get to that age and they go into that period of independence, they go in and you feel safe because it's all about you feeling comfortable when they grow up. You don't want to be worried about them. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to finish tonight's broadcast on something that happened today. Good mate of yours, Alan, Russell, reached out to me. Last night I put out a post. I was working late. I, I, I was helping people and, you know, I, 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 I'm giving it my best right now. Mm. He reached out to me just to make sure I was okay. He didn't know me, but he saw the effort I was putting in and he just wanted to know I was okay. My bit of advice to you tonight Reach out to someone. Hmm. Ask them if they're okay. Make sure their cup's full. On that, hmm. I hope you're smiling. So can I add something really quickly? You've got to ask people three times. Yeah. If once they go, I'm fine. Ask them three times. Yep, hmm. 100%. Are you okay? Listen Are to you the okay? <laughs> Listen to the answer. Yeah. yeah. Then ask them again. And I see Russell just came online. He left a little bit of advice for Kylie. Treat the internet like a client. <laughs> I want that. So on, on that, I just I really want to thank everybody for tonight's panel. Life is tough. We're all getting through it if we support each other. Inside mm. this conversation tonight, we sat, we listened, we heard, we worked through things. We worked through difficulties. We worked through opportunities. We showed up unprepared. We showed up, rolled our sleeves up, and got on with the job. That's what we need to do, and that's what we're here for. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, panellists. It was beautiful again. Um, I'm going to end the broadcast. I look forward to next Thursday night. Get around it. Um, panellists, if you can stay on, we'll have a quick chat. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being on the Campfire Live. See ya. Bye. Ciao.